You have consistently denied the Holocaust happened. You have called it a lie. And I'm just curious, I have some photos. These are dead bodies from a German concentration camp taken by the Associated Press. Mr. President, is this photo fabricated? Is this photo a lie? No. I'm asking you a different question. There are many historical events, similar historical events. Why is this one in particular so important to you? Because you're denying it happened. But in World War II, 60 million people were killed. Why are we just focusing on this special group alone? We're sorry for all the 60 million people that lost their lives equally. All of them were human beings and it doesn't matter whether they were Christians or Jews or Buddhists or Muslims they were killed so we're sorry for everyone Rosenblatt does have a real story of survival in the Nazi concentration camps a story that is genuinely extraordinary but as he explained to us in this exclusive interview he felt he needed to make things up to get people to pay attention the greatest love story we've ever told on this show. Oh my goodness. Herman Rosenblatt received international attention for his story about being a hungry little boy in a Nazi concentration camp who was thrown apples every day by a little girl on the other side of the fence. Years later, according to the story, Rosenblatt met that same girl on a blind date in New York City and he proposed on the spot. They used to come by every day bring the apple, have in my jacket and a piece of bread, and he used to say, I'll see you tomorrow. The story landed Herman and Roma Rosenblatt on Oprah twice and in newspapers all over the world. They also got a book and movie deal. But the story wasn't true. Why did you do it? Why did you tell such a big lie to so many people for so long? It wasn't a lie. It was, I, it was my imagination. And in my imagination, in my mind, I believed it. Even now I believe it, that she was there and she threw the apple to me. How, how can you say it wasn't a lie? It, it wasn't true and, and you know it's not true. Yes, it's not true. But in my imagination, it was true. Rosenblatt says he made the story up to give people hope and to promote understanding about the Holocaust. But members of his own family say his real motivation was money. So you were not motivated in any way by money? No. This is from your son. He said that he knew you were lying for years and he couldn't get you to stop. And here's his quote. It was always hurtful. My father is a man who I don't know. How do you respond to that? I don't know. I can't respond to it. I don't know why he said that. I don't know what, maybe I'll ask him. Herman and Roma Rosenblatt told their false story publicly for more than a decade, but it all fell apart about six weeks ago after Holocaust scholars proved that it was physically impossible for prisoners to approach the fence at the concentration camp where Herman was kept, and that Roma's family was actually more than 200 miles away at the time. Why did your wife agree to go along with this? Did she ever express any because reservations? Because she loves me. Why is she not here today? Because I don't want her to be here today. It's too much, too much going on. Was it difficult for your wife to have to go out very publicly and tell a story that she knew wasn't true? It was. It was. But she loves me so much that if she thinks that's good for me, she'll go along. Rosenblatt is remarkably unrepentant about his years of lying. I pronounce my love for you forever. When you look at that, does it make you uncomfortable at all? No. You think that was the right thing to do? Yeah. And, and, and while you were up on the stage there, in front of all those people, yeah. in the back of your mind, were you not thinking, No. I'm not telling the truth here? No. Let me ask you just quickly about I didn't hear you say you agreed to that. Do we agree to that? Is that Our interview was frequently interrupted by this man, Harris Solomon who says he is planning to produce a fictionalized movie account of Rosenblatt's story, despite complaints from critics. 
if you look on Holocaust and our websites right now, they're using it as we speak as an example of why you shouldn't believe Holocaust survivors. Right. And those Holocaust denier websites would perpetuate some other story if it wasn't Herman Rosenblatt. Rosenblatt says he wants people to know that he did what he did with good intentions. So if you had to do it over again, would you tell the same story? Yeah. You would? Yes. Rosenblatt does say that he's sorry, but he's only sorry, he says, that people took the story, quote, the wrong way. His book deal for a nonfiction memoir fell through a couple of weeks ago because of this controversy, but a fictionalized book may come out this summer, and the movie version is supposed to, supposed to, excuse me, supposed to start shooting this summer as well in Eastern Europe, Diane, and they say they're going to carry on despite the criticism. I simply don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's his imagination, but he knows it's not true. He They're says he made, a up a, he made up a fantasy world, and he was living in that fantasy world. And his son says, tried to stop him. Yes. Good heavens. Okay. Shalom. Kahala Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim. Rakwa Hagadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Who rule well, who taught me this truth. Enough respect to the fellow Akiyam, the house of David, the hopeful elect. Peace to the elect. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shabrach, a thumb to you, Akiyam, as well as the Akwat that are listening and learning. This is your brother Yahweh Sop coming to you again. All right. And other news. <laughs> you know, with prophecy is being uh, poured out. All right. Everything is being filtered through the scriptures. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Is still revealing that son of perdition to boot to be who he always once been. All right, which is a deceiver, a murderer, a vagabond, a fugitive, and he has to take on these identities to cover. All right, his moose tracks. <laughs> all right, his shit shows, his shit stories. You see, and what you have on the screen is a book, which is called the Thirteenth Tribe. All right, which I have purchased. All right, I've read. All right, on my second time reading it on the back, it gives you the rundown. You can pause it and read it. All right, but we're going to focus on the bottom half of it, starting at he produces right here. Okay. So, without further ado, I got some precepts lined up. And we're going to get into this lesson, man. All right. So. Let's start off with Psalms 58 and verse 3. It reads, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Now, that took place when they came up out of their, 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 their dungeon Neanderthal state, man. All right, Revelation speaks of it when they was released, released from that thousand-year period. And what did they do? They, saw it, they started to what? Deceive the nations. All right. <clears throat> And this book gives you pretty much a timeline on how they came, all right, what time period and how they came back into power, right, which it goes back to the Renaissance as well, the rebirth, all right? So if you, as you've seen this man lying, continue to tell lies, all right, this who the wicked is. All right, and it's being revealed. Now, you still have Jake out there is not really um, all right, focused on an enemy or somewhat. Well, the scriptures outline very well who our enemies are, being Hebrew Israelites, all right, being uh, a nation of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Okay, Psalms chapter 2, starting at 1, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? You see? See, this is vain. And you people have uh, been deceived and been, been beguiled, all right, by the lies that have been told, all right, for decades. But truth is being revealed now that they're not telling the truth. They're not the people who they say they are. You see? It says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. You see? And they said a lot of things and they continue to say this. And this is why their heart is fixed on doing away all right, with Jacob. 
All right, it goes back to that birthright, you know? So let's go to this and start, all right? <clears throat> At the bottom, all right, it says he produces a large body of meticulously detailed research in support of a theory that sounds all the more convincing for the restraint with which it is advanced. Yet, should this theory be confirmed, the term anti-Semitism would become void of meaning. The word void, not valid, legally binding, okay? Completely empty, lacking, useless. So the term, which is this man saying, anti-Semitism, which is not a word, it is made up, all right? You have three sons of Noah, all right? Uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? Who comes from the seed line of Shem? That would be called uh, a Shem, okay? Or Shemetic, you see? Let's continue. It says, as Mr. Colster writes, it is based on misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims. So this man not only killing with the sword, all right? He also convinced his enemies and his victims to spread that same story. Continuing on, it says, the story of the Khazar Empire, as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever uh, perpetrated, man. History itself, and who controls the history? Who controls the media? Who controls the outlets of these things? being put on blast you see <laughs> who, who controls that the bankers man hoax the definition for hoax hoax a humorous or, or malicious deception you see it's a practical joke man and these devils are sitting back laughing twirling their thumbs but guess what shame is being spewed on their glory Let's go to the top of it. It says uh, the outline of the book. So like you. It says a startling new discovery about the true ancestry of the Jewish people. It will cause a stir. So roughly give you the gist of this book. Like I said, you can uh, read. They're identified and targeting the corporate man. Who is Esau Edom? All right. And that book uh, 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 costs. You see? So knowing who your enemy is, is very vital, all right, in this spiritual war that we're having. Because what did the Lord make the enemy, man? He made the enemy crooked. He made the enemy cursed, all right, from the beginning. Going back all the way to the garden, when that serpent beguiled Eve, which is the same spirit that's in these so-called white folk, man. All right? Ecclesiastes seven and thirteen. Consider the work of God, yeah, the most high. For who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? You see these crooked paths is being exposed. All right. We're peeling back the veil. All right. As Yahweh Shah mentioned. We are lifting up that skirt through the word of prophecy, you know? So you guys out here claiming that they can be your friends, you can coexist with the so-called white man. Well, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai made us to himself a peculiar people, all right? And even he made the wicked for himself. And the wicked is being revealed. It's up to you to believe. It's up to you to understand all right, the prophecies and the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Job 14 and 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Even when you're trying to make swine kosher. All right. Which these devils are fixated on eating swine. All right. Flesh. Okay. In the Holy Land. Eating abominable things in the Holy Land. Such as crab, lobster. 
you know, uh, shrimp po' boys and shit. All right, you can't make that claim. No matter if you grow, grow a farm and you feed uh, uh, the animal vegetables or what. Well, the scripture tells you who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one. All right. See, Yahweh by Shem Shai has made things, all right, to coincide with each other. Two and two. All right. Let's go to the book of Sirach, 34 and 4. Of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? See, this devil is a profane. He's a vain babbler. All right. He's void of understanding. He's also an unclean, cursed thing. So the scriptures are asking you of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? And from that thing, which is false, what truth can come? It's been proven. All right. All up on the all up on Google, man. Their tongues fall up on themselves, proving to you that certain events in history are staged. This goes back. All right. To the deceivableness that the devil has in his arsenal. All right. Yeah, he's blessed with the sword. All right. But the main thing that got our folks in derision are, are his uh, his lies, his stories. It's made up ho hoax again, a humorous, malicious deception, man. All right. When you deceive somebody, you pretty much you got punked. All right. And this is what they're saying in their secret councils. All right. We have punked the nations of the world. They have made those nations drink of that cup. All right. And the, the, the kings of the nations have become drunk. And this is why ultimately this place is going to be taken out, man, by the other nations. All right, from the spirit and powers of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, man. You know, because if we didn't know this information, we wouldn't be bringing it to the light. To bring that out, let's bring, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 8. I'm going to start at 16. No man, when he had lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on, it on a candlestick. That they which enter in may see the light. See, once you clicked on this video, you have entered into the light. And that light is being shed in a dark, gloomy, shadowless place, man, which is here in America. Babylon the Great. All right. And things are being exposed on a high level. And this is prophecy within itself, man. Verse 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad, man. All right. These are the revelations, man. You know, manifest, display, be uh, evidence of clear or obvious to the eye or mind. So if you have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, your mind will well be uh, will be well instructed if you hearken unto the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You understand? These these things are simple unto the wise. All right? But they are stumbling blocks unto the wicked. And this is why they make their tongue fall upon themselves. You have to go and dig deep into the archives. Study to make the show thyself approved. All right? Put on the whole armor. Present your body. All right? All these things are pleasing to the Most High. All right? And through Him, we expose so, again, that Psalms 2 and 1, why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing, man. Y'all imagining something that is, that is a, a void of understanding, that is lost. You see, it's a lost cause to uh, uh, adhere to this man's education or his feeble laws. You see, even though we abide by, all right, to live day to day, to continue, all right, in this in this ministry, nevertheless, they are feeble. You know, his education is infamy, man. All right. So with that, let's go to the book of Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, chapter two, verse sixteen. It says, "Thou art filled with shame for glory." All right, they asked the man, "Simple man, hey man, why you, <laughs> why you made up this story, man? Uh, it was true, but." 
It's my imagination. And this is what these devils think, man. All right? He imagined how, how to throw you into a pit, man. All right? And a pit has no light in it. It's darkness. You know? It says, Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. All right? And what we're pouring out is wines, the blood of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Meaning we are prophesying against this devil, against Mount Seir. All right? Shaking the hand that, that, that our ministry may go up to the gates of the nobles, man. And this is what's taking place. And as we continually continue, all right, to prophesy and to speak the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh he's going to be uh, continue to be uncovered. And once you're uncovered, all right, and your, your nakedness is being shown, all right, shame is on you now, you know. It says, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. And that's a filthy thing. A foreskin is a filthy thing, man. That's why we was commanded to circumcise our children, man. All right? Kind of grit and grind, dirt. <laughs> it says, the cup of the Lord's, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai's right hand, shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. And let's look up that word spewing real, real quick. All right, Emmett, poor, expel large quantities of something rapidly and forcibly. And this is what's taking place to all the brothers that's fervently uh, 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 pushing out this truth through meekness and humility, long suffering. We are expelling large quantities of the scriptures, the testimony of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, rapidly and forcibly. So this is rapid fire. We have our. Uh, uh, all right, I would call it a so-called weapon, being careful, all right, because the Bible is the most powerful weapon on the planet Earth, all right, and we have tapped into that knowledge. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has exposed us to his mysteries, to his secrets, being the servants and being the friends that we are. We are in rapid fire mode, man. We are striking while the iron is hot, as uh, the Apostle Gabar says, man, all right? So we're spewing out the scriptures, letting this devil know that, hey, man, shameful spewing shall be on your glory, man. All right. And what's your glory, man? Your glory is this little daughter, <laughs> this little harlot whore, Babylon the Great, man. All right. Your little sister, man, to find out, you know, she's a fucking whore. You know? So you're going to have to drink of that cup, man. And you're, 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 you're drinking the... The, the, you know you're sipping it now all right but it's gonna be have it's gonna have to be chug moment why do you think these devils have thing in their bars called chug 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 well that's what that's a chance we're gonna be chanting in the kingdom man <laughs> chug 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 <laughs> you know jeremiah 25 and verse 28 and it shall be if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink because they're gonna have hey they're resisting now man they're making their appeal to the higher course man to the lord all right but they're making their appeal on the left hand side all right we have the the the, the spirit you know to, to pray on the right hand side we have the righteousness of right all right that comes within the scripture. That comes within the secrets of grave sentences. That comes with uh, uh, eating the whole roll. That comes with putting on the whole armor. Show you, showing yourselves men. You see? So if they refuse to take the cup at thy hand to drink, then shalt thou say unto them. So who is saying? Who is speaking? The prophets. What we shall say, Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Ye shall certainly drink man so here it is he's been exposed all right he's taking body blows he's taking head shots he's in the corner he's scraping all right he's he, he's scratching and clawing to do anything he can <laughs> to 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 you know substantiate and to uh set his enterprise forth all right like an everlasting house as the, as the scriptures say roughly paraphrased they inherit it. They think their inheritance is going to continue forever. But no, man. You got that bound set. You got that hourglass. You got that TikTok out. And the clock is ticking, man. All right? You're, you're done. You're finito. You're finished. You see? 
So with that, hey, I pray this lesson was edifying and comforting. On to the next one. Shalom.